is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone to Easter services. This is otherwise known as Resurrection Day. And I like to say that more than Easter. Because it, it's the truth. It was a day of resurrection. And uh, to all of our guests, members, and everybody else that's shown up, we welcome you in Jesus' name. And may this be a blessed time for you as we praise and give honor and glory to our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is Christ. Eh? Yeah. Okay, we're going to have some prayer time. And I want to share with you the ones that I have. And then if you have some uh, prayer requests, we will take those. Um, first of all, for Lori Harnsberger, uh, she's been hospitalized, and I, I don't have an update on her, by the way, but uh, she's had abdominal pain, high white blood count, bleeding around her liver. Uh, they're considering surgery, and so we're praying that the doctors will make some good decisions and uh, figure out what is going on. Uh, for Bill Hobbs, uh, I was told he was doing better. He's still in ICU. Is that true? Anybody know? Okay, um, as of March 25th, um, he has a rare autoimmune disease. Uh, no surgery yet, but uh, they are considering it. So he's going to remain in the hospital uh, for observation and some uh, testing. Uh, for Randy Anderson, he also is in the hospital with a serious heart issue. And so we're asking the Lord to uh, pray for the doctors, uh, guidance, make good decisions and for comfort and, and uh, for healing. For Hal Werner, he's on hospice with uh, congestive heart failure as of March the 20th. And so we pray that uh, he will have pain relief uh, as he faces here his uh, end of life. For Jonathan, prayers of thanks that his back is better. And that's always good. You bet. And uh, Susan Murphy, she has a place to live, and so we're celebrating. She moved in yesterday. Good deal. And then uh, Bill is going to be ha going in uh, for some tests on April the 4th. We keep him in our prayers for that. Uh, for Taylor, uh, in an emergency situation, she's going to be admitted into a psych ward. And um, there's so we want to ask God to calm her and to help the, uh, the doctors uh, bring some uh, resolve and some healing into her life. And then for her daughter Delaney, uh, she has to live with her dad, which is not a good thing. So uh, we remember her. And then uh, Artis uh, Nyland, I don't have an update on her, but uh, she was in the hospital with some, uh, some health issues. So if anybody have some latest on her? I know many of you know her from uh, our previous uh, ELCA congregation, Our Saviors. So uh, if you find out, please, please let us know. Taking some prayer requests now. Went back there with Billy. Oh, and by the way, if you have a cell phone that's on, please turn it to silence or off, please. I did mine. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Okay, Billy, we know you have the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> um, my son, our son's um, his wife's mother is in the hospital with pneumonia. She's close to Nick's age, and she's struggling really, re really bad with pneumonia. They can't seem to get the liquid, the fluid off her lungs. So okay, prayers for her. Her name is Brenda Roberts. So she's old. <laughs> and a, yep. No. All right. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. We want to hear it. Yes. And a prayer for Billy. Her neck is really hurting her. What's that? I said a. Yes, yet, Billy. A prayer for Billy, and her neck is really hurting her. Thank you. Say, Billy, does it hurt when you? Which which direction? To the right? Yeah. Don't do that. Don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You set me up and I couldn't help myself. I want to ask for more prayers and also celebration. Al's brother, Clell, had a major uh, brain bleed stroke on Tuesday. 
Uh, he has no paralysis, no slurred speech. They put drain tubes into his skull, and he's doing quite well. And the doctors, the neurosurgeons said, there had to be some kind of intervention for this to happen. It makes no sense at all. The stroke was so major that he should have serious side effects, so we know God is good. Absolutely. What's his first name? Clell. Actually, it's Don, but he goes by Clell. Okay, and then also an update uh, on Tony Fromke. And um, he's, doing, he's doing really well. He's in a, a ward room now. And uh, he's very lonely because when he was in ICU, there was lots of attention. Okay, so he's, he's feeling pretty isolated right now. And so if you want to give him a, a call or send a card, go there because uh, he's really kind of hankering for some uh, communicating. And uh, he's, he is able to have control over all of his limbs. He's getting up and they're gradually teaching him how to get back on track with his walking. He's communicating, he talks. Uh, this is another one of those things where they don't get it that he's recovering from his massive stroke too. So uh, we pray for him because he's also uh, extreme diabetic. He's taking uh, dialysis and they never thought he'd be able to do that again. So that's pretty cool. Any others? Over. Yes. Hang on. I'll be there. An update on Debbie. Her back is still bothering, but she did get some pain pills, but only eight. That's all the government would allow. Yeah, they don't hand those out much, do they? Okay, I have two. One is that um, I've asked for your prayers before for my niece, Kimber who's going through a very um, painful separation and divorce. Um, this weekend, yesterday, was her son's third birthday, and she was not allowed to see him. So um, just continue prayers for them. She's getting him back t uh, later this afternoon and has her own birthday party planned for him. But And then the other thing is that my, my oldest niece, the one who lives in Corvallis, gave me a picture yesterday and it was of cute little two-year-old Brooke holding a sign that says Big Sis. Oh. So she's going to be having a baby in October. So Thanksgiving for that. Hot doggies. And yeah. her, uh, my niece's name is Carissa. Okay, so it's... Kim Kimber. Kimber. Kimber is the one who didn't get to see Right. Okay, and Carissa is having a baby in October. Gotcha. I, I had Brooke and I said, what? Okay, Carissa. Terry. Can you hear me? Go ahead. A friend of mine, Marty Frazier. Wait a minute. Turn Meg on. Good. on. Friend of mine, Marty Frazier, she's in the hospital. I visited her yesterday. She was scheduled for a procedure to get unblocked. I'm praying for healing for her and restored health. Thank you. What was what was the issue? The issue was that she got plugged up in okay. her gut. Okay. <laughs> Any others? Susan? <clears throat> yeah, I have a real close friend in Bandon, Oregon. She's, they took her to the hospital the other day. They still don't know what's going on, but she's home. Her name's Sandy. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I'd like to offer a praise. Uh, last Wednesday's meeting went really well, and hopefully it's gonna be the harbinger of great things to come. Continue prayers for Michael Turner. He's still comatose. Have not heard how the EEG went on Monday, but I would expect not so good. <laughs> but yeah, he's been in a coma since August the 11th. So. Okay. Thank you. Any others? Oh, right up here with Penny.
Um, our sister made it to New Zealand. Yay! <laughs> First name again? Joanne. Okay, let's go to our Lord. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day in which we can celebrate uh, the resurrection of your Son, Jesus, who is Christ. We thank you for the hope that you give to us in the resurrection of Jesus, and uh, so that as we live in him, we shall live with you in heaven. And we thank and praise you for these folks that we've na named before you, Lord, you know their needs, and you know how you have commanded us to pray for them. And we ask that as uh, you have bent your ear to us this morning, that you will continue to exercise your will upon them. And so, Lord, uh, with their names for Jonathan and Susan, for Bill and Taylor, for uh, Delaney, for Artis, for, uh, for Brent, I can't even read my name. Brina, I think Brina Rob, Roberts, anyway, uh, for Billy, for Al, uh, Al's brother, for Clell, uh, Clell and for, um, for Debbie, w for Kimber, and uh, Carissa, and big sister Brooke, uh, praising you for Tony Fromke's uh, continued improvement, uh, for Lori Harnsberger, for Bill Hobbs, for Randy Anderson and Hal Werner, for Marty Fraser, Sandy, and uh, Michael Turner and Joanne. Lord, we thank you that you are even now uh, ministering to them with all the various resources that you have at your disposal. And so, Lord, uh, thank you that you are already working on their behalf. And then finally, a praise that Ron's meeting went well this past Wednesday, and uh, we are thanking and praising you that things are progressing uh, in that whole thing with the... Uh, the powers, uh, the, the dams, and all that stuff. So, Lord, you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and we thank you that because you loved us so much, you sent Jesus to live, to die, and to uh, be raised from the dead, and now, sitting at your right hand, where we are waiting for that time in which you gather your church home. So thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand as you're able for our big opening
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Glad songs, songs of salvation, salvation are in the, the tents of the righteous. righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The, the right hand of the Lord exalts. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord has disciplined me severely, <coughs> but he has not given me over to death. death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This, this is, is the, the gate, gate of the Lord. Lord. The, the righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus, who earlier had healed Mary Magdalene, sent her on that first Easter morning to be one of the first witnesses to his resurrection. Let us confess our sins to God and ask his forgiveness, praying that he would send us out as witnesses to his resurrection. Almighty God, God we, we have sinned against you in our thoughts, thoughts words, and, and actions. Instead, instead of living in the power of our Savior's resurrection, resurrection we, we follow our own selfish and sinful desires. desires. We, we turn, turn from your holy word and listen instead to temptations of the world around us. We often live to please ourselves instead of serving others in Jesus' name. Have mercy on us and forgive our sins. We hear the good news. As the Lord showed grace to Mary Magdalene, healing her and sending her as a witness, he shows grace to us. Jesus, our Savior, suffered and died for our sins and rose to life on that first Easter morning. I am announcing to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I, I shall, shall not, not die, die but, but I shall live, and, and recount the deeds of the Lord. Lord. This, this is, is the day, day that the Lord, Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Christ is risen. 
Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of our scriptures. Our first reading is taken from the Old Testament and from Isaiah chapter 25, and you can find that on page 696 in your pew Bible. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. 
The second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. You can find that on page 1142 in your pew Bible. <clears throat> Beginning with verse 12. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in Christ we have hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to his own order. <clears throat> those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he is expect, accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. This ends the Old Testament readings and the New Testament readings, and please stand for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early, while it was still dark, and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to him, to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they've laid him. So Peter went out with the other disciple, and, as, and they were going toward the tomb. Both of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped in to look at the, into the tomb, 
and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that, she had, and that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of our, of our Lord. Please be seated. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now during this time of my message, there's going to be a few times in which I'm going to say he is risen and then you'll respond, he is risen indeed. Okay? So, pay attention. <laughs> Today, as you've probably figured it out, this is how Mary Magdalene received the news of the resurrection of Jesus and what she did with that news when she saw the angels and then encountered Jesus himself. We have been on a road during the season of Lent and through Holy Week in which we have experienced amazing grace through the experiences of disciples and other people that Jesus knew. And so today, being Mary Magdalene, it is most appropriate for the day of resurrection. When we last saw the disciples together, they were sleeping while Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. They were startled from their slumbers by those who came to arrest Jesus. And they were gripped with fear and most fled the scene. But Peter would stick around and for a while he'd be there in the courtyard while Jesus was on trial. But for fear of having his identity discovered, he denied Jesus. He denied Jesus how many times? Three, Three times before the rooster crowed twice. And in tears, he would also flee. The remainder who stayed with Jesus at least until Friday afternoon were mostly women who witnessed his crucifixion and his burial. And so there is a mood of somberness surrounding all the goings on. There's fear and even on Easter evening we will still find the disciples hiding from the authorities in a locked room because they feared the Jews. They would be on a on a headhunt, so to speak. Hardly the story of a great excitement of the Easter, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Easter morning dawned. It was still a time of mourning and lament for the followers of Jesus, but the light of Easter had not yet dawned upon them, and that was going to change. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now among those who witnessed the death of Jesus was Mary Magdalene. Even in this time of lament and weeping, she was there for a reason. She was among many who had experienced the amazing grace of Jesus in her lifetime. While we are not told the details of that grace, we are told that she is the one who was freed from seven demons that possessed her. Seven demons might suggest that she had a recurring problem, and that problem needed to be a have a graceful solution. Of course, many of us struggle with our own demons, don't we? Hmm? 
We may speak of them only to our closest friends or maybe even our relatives. And if or when such demons ever become re revealed to others, it usually is with whispers in private. Sometimes we see these demons come boldly presenting themselves in the major news. Stories of violence where strong and angry words and actions lead to great tragedy. Then we realize that it's not just us. There's a lot of evil happening in the world. And humanity is possessed by it. And when we see it, we are immediately stunned into silence. If there is any thought we have, any words that we say, any song we sing in these dark moments, it is only a thought, word, or song of lament. That's always the first song in the face of tragedy, isn't it? A song of lament. Yet the light of God's grace may break through even in these dark moments. The walls and the barriers in which these traffic, tragic evils hide. Even in our own lives, the light of Easter breaks through. Maybe at least for a moment as it does this morning. With a thought, a word, or a song of joy. Such joy is enough to think, to say, and to sing, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah. On Easter morn, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, freed indeed of her many past demons. But now she is dealing with the darkness of lament. On this morning, she is mourning. Her own lament is part of the darkness that shrouds this scene as she comes to the tomb of Jesus. But let's be clear. She did not expect to be moved beyond that dark moment. She came to weep and to mourn. She didn't expect that the tomb to which she was going would be, uh, she expected that it would be closed tightly, keeping Jesus in the strong bands of death. To her surprise, she witnessed that the stone had been, uh, that had been covering the tomb had been rolled away. And with some excitement and haste, she ran to Simon Peter. She didn't bother going there. She was so excited she ran back to the disciples and said to Simon Peter and to the disciples what she had seen. And no kidding, did they get excited? Well, let's go, you know, let's go find out what's going on. But her message was not the, the joyous good news of Easter. It was even more dark and ominous. News of dark tragedy. Not only is Jesus dead, not only was he placed in the tomb, but now all of a sudden his body is gone. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Grave robbers, first thought. As if the darkness could not get any deeper, now there is the added anguish of those who believe that the grave of Jesus had been robbed. Indeed, fear compounded more fear. And the song of lament came, became even stronger. Such fear and lament, it seems, is so deeply rooted in us that forever, for whenever we hear bad news, it raises its ugly head. We fear the worst. How many of you, when you hear bad news, you say, oh goody, Where was Jesus' body? They didn't know. Peter and the disciples whom Jesus loved ran to the tomb. Didn't say they walked quickly, they ran. That was the excitement. What is this all about? This other disciple ran with more haste and reached the tomb before Peter. Well, if Peter was older, of course, he probably wouldn't be able to catch up with John. We don't know, but... All we know is that John was fleet-footed. And he peered into the tomb. He looked in. He saw the linen, linen wrappings that, that were there, but he saw that, that the body wasn't. So he was a little confused. He didn't go in. But when Peter arrived, he ran straight into the tomb. He saw what the other disciple had seen, but curiously, he also saw 
that the cloth that had been on Jesus' head was now folded up, as if someone had purposely done so. Why would grave robbers take the time to do that? Well, there is, of course, another explanation, that the body that was once here in death's strong bands is no longer confined. Like when in the morning our time of sleeping has come to an end and we are no longer sleeping but awake, well, most of us anyway, we still leave behind clues that this is so in the bedroom. Peter may not have discerned that at first. The other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, did sense that something new was in the air. He believed what Jesus had told him about the resurrection from the dead. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! But while the other disciples returned to their homes, Mary stayed at the tomb, still weeping, still lamenting. And through her tears, as she looked into the tomb for herself, now she has seen something different. She sees two angels sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and one at the feet. And these messengers speak to her. They ask the question, woman, why are you weeping? Why are you lamenting? To which she frames her lament even more personally much more personally than she did to the disciples. Jesus, whom she cherished as Lord because he had in life cleansed her of all her demons in his amazing grace. He was not here. They have taken away my Lord and I do not know where they've laid him. No sooner had she been given this expression had given this expression of her lament that she would turn around and encounter another stranger who was standing near her. She didn't recognize him. Was it because she was still in the darkness of her lamenting? Was it the, the tears and the swollen eyes that kept her from recognizing? Was it because she thought it was just another person who was there to tend the garden where this tomb was located, a stranger with no recognizable features or aspects that would make us think differently about him. Even as we, in our own lamenting and in our own fears, may pass many strangers who are there with us in those dark moments with little recognition from us, the stranger also asks, Woman, why are you weeping? Now, incidentally, woman is not a derogatory thing, dress, okay? Woman was an endearing thing. It's like, it's like saying to mama, very tender, Woman, why are you weeping? But then adds a second question, For whom are you seeking? Does Mary sense that this second question has some knowledge about the, the one for whom she is really looking? In all her anguish and her lament, is this one that could be the one she is seeking? Maybe. At least she replies as though she might. Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. You see, lament has not yet left her. But now she may sense some clue, some hope, that she may find some answers about the body of Jesus. And so she will. But she is in for an even greater surprise. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! When this stranger speaks to her once again, he speaks, as we would say, in her language. He speaks in quite personal terms, using only one word, her name. And in the speaking, she notices something she didn't notice before. Mary, he says to her. 
The mere mention of her name is already a life-changing grace, even as it is for all of us. The mere mention of her name is life-changing, and so it is for us. When we were baptized and our names are prominently mentioned in the community gathered here, our own names are mentioned in connection with Jesus, His life, His death, and His resurrection. His voice speaks to us with good news, good news that falls upon our lamenting spirits and our often deaf ears. His voice graces Mary in her stale lamenting and changes this moment into something totally new, something truly good. Recognizing his, this voice as one she has certainly known for some time, who has called her name many times before in grace and in promise, she responds with excitement and joy for the first time in days. Rabboni, teacher! When, uh, when friends or family get together after being apart for a while, greeting one another by name, I don't know how it is in, in your family, but uh, one that I grew up in, people are compelled to hug each other. Hmm? How many of you experience that sort of thing? You get together, it, whether it's friends or family, and you, you haven't seen him for a while, and it's like, wow, how you doing? Big hug. Now, of course, there were some of my relatives that said, no, nah, you're not going to be hugging me him anyway. <laughs> and sometimes you say, well, get over here. You know. It's a new moment, you see. Again, for the first time. It's a good moment. It's a grace-filled moment. I don't know if we look at it that way very often, but when we are together with family, with friends, with our church family, it is a good moment. It is a grace-filled moment. You're among those whom you bless the Lord and worship Him together, and it's always good. It doesn't mean that there are folks that you, you know, always get along with, <laughs> but what, we are, what are we told in Scripture? Huh? You are to love your neighbor as yourself. And if you're going to do that, you better love God. Because if you say you love God and don't get along, don't, and, and you hate a brother or sister, you made yourself out to be a liar. See? So it's always good that even the folks that we disagree with, that we, um, well, just don't like sometimes, we are there to greet them in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. It's a grace-filled moment. That's why we share the peace. It's a grace-filled moment. And no one could fault Mary for wanting to do the same as she does at this moment with Jesus. If you were Mary, would you just stand there, you know, he, you know who he is, would you say, oh, it's you. Hot doggies. I don't know about you, but I think I'd do exactly what Mary did. I would want a great big old hug. And so that's probably what Mary did. She couldn't help herself. Here's her Lord. Here's the one who delivered her. Here's the one who kindled and nurtured her faith to the point in which when he was gone, as she thought, she lamented. She couldn't understand how Jesus could be gone. She had not yet understood the promise that Jesus had given to his disciples. And because the women would travel with them, they would have heard, she would have heard. <laughs> and Jesus, the bearer of all grace, would certainly not want to deprive her of that moment. Now, in their encounter, death no longer keeps them apart. Now, tears of lament give way to tears of inexpressible joy. So her eyes got even more swollen. But wouldn't that be a good deal? Tears of joy. 
So Jesus says to her something interesting. Do not cling to me. How many of us, when we've seen somebody we haven't seen for a while, or they're very near, dear to us, or it's kind of like when Cheryl and I would visit our parents, or they would come and visit us, whenever we would uh, say goodbye for the time, because we lived several miles away, that we would say goodbye with a big hug, and it was because we may not see them again. And so we, we milk dry all the moments that we have of joy. And yes, there's tears and we might not see each other again, but then there are those tears that say, uh, we've enjoyed this time. It's been a grace-filled time. And incidentally, my dad, who was never a hugger, <laughs> he was one of those stoic Germans, you know, and Germans aren't funny, right? <laughs> Norwegians are. Yes, they are. They tell jokes on themselves. You'll never hear a German tell a joke on themselves. Because they're not funny. I'm German. I don't know. Maybe I'm a weird, weird German. But anyway, I like people when they set me up so I can get them. Many of you know that, right? Yeah. yeah. But this, this, these are those moments, and Mary was smack dab in the middle of it, Wanting to hang on to Jesus. You're here. You're alive. I want to stay with you. But Jesus is telling her, don't cling to me, Mary. Don't try to hang on to me. Keep me here. It's wonderful that we are reunited. It's wonderful that you've heard the good news. You've seen me. You know that I'm alive. I'm not dead any longer. This is good news. This is a good moment. But it has to be just a moment. But Jesus, Jesus tells her the reason why she needs uh, not to cling to him, and that is she needs to let go because she needs now to go and tell someone else. She needs to go and tell the other disciples. He is alive. It's not easy to let go of joy. But it needs to be shared. It needs to be extended. And that's, that's our business. That's our job, folks. You know that. We would like to cling to Jesus when we encounter him in so many different ways. It's one of those breakthrough moments when you've experienced the grace of Jesus and you don't want to let go of that moment, right? You ever had one of those? Maybe you're out in, in, uh, in the mountains and all of a sudden uh, you're sensing the glory of the Creator. And then you think about Jesus who was there with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, putting everything together and it was good, it was wonderful. Now it's broken, yes, but it's still good and wonderful. And we can look and we can praise our Creator and know that Jesus is as close as the very air that we breathe. That joy that we experience in times like that, whether it's out in, in God's good creation or among the people of God or people that you love, that joy needs to extend because it needs to be something that is, that is caught. And we've been doing some of those kinds of things here lately with the little Jesus. Well, mine disappeared. He was wandering around here. Oh, here he is. He got moved. But our little Jesus, and some of you have been using this as a way of sharing your faith with others. One was telling me about three encounters, and each one uh, began with this. Folks, if you see a little Jesus and you want to share it, take it and share it. But we always have that lead in. Do you need a little Jesus? <laughs> and so you can say, Here's a little Jesus. And they're saying, what's that all about? Well, you got the foot in the door. <laughs> Thank you for asking. And you'll see how people's eyes light up. It's like when you say, God bless you, when you're talking with folks. doesn't matter if they're people you know or not. Their eyes light up. Even if they don't believe in Jesus, you see a change in their attitude. It's really an amazing thing. If they want to be angry, that's their fault. That's on them. But you are sharing a joy that you have in your life because Jesus is real to you. He is the resurrected Lord, and he is with us now. We just don't see him. He's here. 
just as he promised. I am with you always, not some of the time, not most of the time, but all the time. So now, she, like us, need to go and extend that joy. Because there's others who are living in lament. There's a lot of people, that even on this resurrection day, they're not having a good day. They're facing tragedy, ill health, maybe broken bones, separation, either from a spouse or a loved one, doesn't matter. They're in the midst of lament. There is a great sadness. But Jesus says, the good news that you are going to take is going to change the attitude of those disciples when you go back and tell them. And he says, this, this uh, love, I'm sending you out because I have not ascended to my Father yet. There is no time to waste because soon I will be ascending. These disciples need to hear this good news. They need to have some joy in their life because they're still back in that room hiding. Even though Peter and John and some other disciples have heard this good news, they are still sad. They're still bewildered. They can't make sense out of anything, especially when Mary comes back. Jesus tells her, I'm ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. And ascending means more than ascending to the cross as he did. It means ascending to a place where all can be seen and cared for by him. And Jesus, having ascended, he is seeing all things. He knows the whole world the whole populace of peoples and nations because he died for all. It is God's ultimate will that no one be lost, but that people would be saved. And that's why we have such a job to do. So many still struggling with demons are caught in the shadows of lament and fear, but such ascension does not mean distance from them. It means being in a place where he can see and call out the names of all. How does he do that? He calls out their names through us. It's like the, the old hymn, Jesus is calling, he's calling you home. With his voice, he calls out our names. And his good news and the grace that he raises us, that the joy of his resurrection is joy for everyone. We already have some occasions for expressing this Easter moment that overcomes lament and it brings joy to the hearts of others. When we share the peace of the Lord, I already mentioned that, but it bears again, try adding their name. Hmm? Add their name. The peace of the Lord be with you so-and-so or so-and-so at the Peace Lord be with you. As I've seen because we're such a huggy bunch. And it's good. It's a good thing. We may even hug as we do, but now we are no longer strangers. And you know the really neat thing is that the Apostle Paul said in, uh, in Ephesians that Jesus came to bring peace to those who were far off and peace to those who were near. Why? So that through him we can all come to God and not be afraid. Wow. That is very cool. And so it means that we are, as Paul would say, it means that we are no longer strangers who are walking around the world all alone in fear, in lament, but we have become part of Jesus who is the cornerstone. So with these no longer strangers, through the reconciling peace of Jesus our Lord, these words of peace Jesus gives to us, his own to us, the words of our dear brother, our dear friend, our dear risen Lord Jesus Christ, even though our voice, through our voice, we get to hear his voice calling us by name, gracing us with peace 
and is greater than all our demons and lamentations, our tragedies, all our fears. His victorious voice triumphs over death in the grave, giving us a new way to light to the light of heaven that casts all darkness aside. What does the Apostle John say in his first letter in John? The light, meaning Jesus, shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In other words, Jesus breaks into the situations we are, which are dark, and he says, let there be light once more. And in this light, we live. In this light, we minister. In this light, we call each other by name. This is the new way, and it shows in our thoughts, our words, our songs, as we declare that because of Easter, joy in Christ's amazing grace will always be with us for the ages to come. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah and amen. Would you please stand as you're able for singing of Amazing Grace. our faith. I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and, and the, the life, life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We take a moment, share the peace with one another. Use their name. <laughs>
crucified and risen Lord, today we celebrate your resurrection and your triumph over sin, death, and the devil. In you we have forgiveness and the sure and certain promise of eternal life. We have heard the glad news, he is risen. We believe that you are our living and reigning Savior. Gracious Lord, have, have mercy, mercy on us, us and, and hear our prayer. prayer. Crucified and risen Lord, you healed Mary Magdalene, casting out demons that possessed her. In grace you called her to be a witness to your resurrection. As you did in the lives of Mary and your disciples, you have showered us with your grace, healing us by your wounds and calling us to serve others and live as witnesses to your amazing grace. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Crucified and risen Lord, we pray for healing for those in need in body and spirit, especially again those we name before you in our hearts. Give them strength of faith and courage to face the difficult days in their lives. Grant hope to those who are facing grief and loss. Let us serve, lead us to serve them in love, offering to them the comfort found in the promises of your word. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer. Crucified and risen Lord, you sent the women from the empty tomb to tell your disciples the joyful news of your resurrection. Give us the courage to be faithful witnesses to you, our living Lord and King, so that in the power of the Spirit we can bring hope to a world lost in darkness of sin. Help us to bring to others the light of Easter morning, the light of forgiveness and life for all who believe. Gracious Lord. Have mercy <clears throat> on us and hear our prayer. Crucified and risen Lord, we give you thanks and praise for your amazing grace. In grace you called sinners, named and unnamed in Scripture, to serve in your kingdom. David, Isaiah, the blind man, the woman at the well, Paul, Peter, John, the repentant thief, and Mary Magdalene. In grace you have forgiven our sins and called us, as you called those other saints, to serve in your kingdom. Gracious Lord, have mercy on us and, and hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, remember us always in your kingdom and keep teaching us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear people of God, all things are prepared, and the Lord invites you to his supper table. Once again, worthiness to receive the body and blood of Jesus is simply a believing heart. God knows your heart, and when at times we feel that we're not able, that is when our Lord would say, that's when you need to come, because my grace is here for you. And as we know, that our Lord's grace is sufficient for us when we are weak. So the ushers will assist you in a moment, and incidentally, we do have gluten-free wafers, if that is what you require or desire, and you'll be coming to me, which is in the center. There's two stations, one over there, one here, and uh, I'll have the gluten-free wafers. We also have grape juice over wine, if that's what you require or desire, and so as you come, just place your index finger up, and uh, we'll know what to serve you. God's peace and his... And his um, Resurrect, resurrected strength and healing is here for you. Come, because he has prepared it.
Now the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who's just given you himself in this meal of bread and wine, may he strengthen and preserve each one of you in true faith and in your serving to life eternal. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. <clears throat> stand as you're able. and then you are all free to go. We don't have nummies afterwards because I know that you're going to be going to a big spread somewhere else. <laughs> and they certainly don't want to spoil your appetite. <clears throat> Do we have some? <laughs> wow, that's amazing. All right, well, that's good. What? I thought council had some announcement. Not that I'm aware of. Did we have an announcement from council? Oh, that's a good, yes, yes. You are right, Penny. Just one, and that is uh, with in another week or so, two weeks actually, uh, we're going to be hosting the Northwest District Gathering of LCMC, which we are part of, of course, and it's uh, going to be for Friday and Saturday. If you would like to be a part of this, to sit in and listen to the speakers, uh, please join us. But there is a registration fee, and if you want some information on that, see me afterwards or see Bruce or anybody on the council, and uh, they'll help you out. 
But I really encourage you to do that. It's an opportunity when we have it here and we don't have to travel somewhere else. And it's going to be an absolutely wonderful time. And we're going to have some really neat worship. We're uh, using some, a few of the more modern ones and lots of gospel songs. And uh, oh, it's just going to be a hoot. Oh, that's right. And Saturday night, we are having a concert here. We have the Bethel Mountain Band. And so uh, tell your friends and enemies and all that that, you, that they can come here and uh, enjoy each other and have some really fine music. Fine. That's Saturday the 13th at 7 o'clock. At night. <laughs> I'm not going to be here at 7 o'clock in the morning. Let me tell you that right now. <laughs> good point. Good point. Okay. So, God is good. All the time. All the time. God, God is, is good. good. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And He's coming again soon. Come, come Lord Jesus. And so, uh, how do you shake with folks you haven't seen before or seen for a while? Introduce yourself. Tell them how grateful you are that they could be together on this Resurrection Day to praise our Lord and to be a part of uh, well, Resurrection Day. It's an awesome thing. It's very good. And God's grace is always with us. So, go in peace now and keep serving our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God.